Hi everyone and welcome to the Hunt Museum's Viking programme for post-primary school students. Today we're going to be learning all about who the Vikings were, where they went and why they travelled, what their lives were like and we're also going to be learning about the Vikings in Ireland. We're going to be using Viking replica objects as evidence to learn about their lives and we're also going to be looking at real Viking objects from the Hunt Museum permanent collection. Make sure you have your Viking activity workbook printed out because we're going to be filling it out as we go along. Now let's begin. Who were the Vikings? The Vikings were fierce warriors that travelled Europe from the late 8th to the late 11th centuries during a period known as the Viking Age. They came from Scandinavia, a region in Northern Europe consisting of Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Scandinavia was very cold and life was tough there for the Vikings. They found it difficult to farm animals and grow crops in these harsh conditions. Because of this, they left Scandinavia and travelled Europe in search of warmer land. The Vikings travelled by sea. They were skilled shipbuilders and built longboats called drakkar. These were innovative and unique at the time because they had sails. This allowed the Vikings to change direction while sailing. They travelled in ships to places such as England, Ireland, Greece, Italy, France, Spain and Iceland. This is a Viking sunstone. Can you guess what it was for? Pause the video here and write down your answer. The sunstone was a tool used by Vikings to help them navigate while sailing the seas. In order to know what direction they were sailing, the Vikings would need to know where the sun is in the sky. However, often they'd be sailing in cloudy or foggy conditions. This would make it difficult for them to see the sun and to know where they were going. This is where the sunstone comes in. The sunstone is made of Icelandic spar, which is a mineral that refracts light that travels through it in such a way that it creates a doubled image. However, when you hold the sunstone up to the sun in the right position, even if it's behind a cloud, the doubled image becomes a single image. In this way, the Vikings would know where the sun is at all times and would know where they're going. Can you think of any objects that we use today to help us navigate? Pause the video here and write down your answer. Today we use GPS such as Google Maps to help us know where we're going. People also use things like compasses. Now it's time to complete activities 1 and 2 in the Viking workbook. For activity 1, take a look at the list of names of places that the Vikings went and see if you can find them on the map. For activity 2, we're going to be looking at the Viking Drakkar. Take a look at the diagram of the Viking Drakkar and see if you can label it correctly. Research the different parts of the ship and write down their description. Pause the video here and have a go. The Vikings were pagans which made local Christian monasteries popular targets for raids and battles. They formed fearsome raiding parties and stole precious monastery items such as chalices, brooches and beautiful decorative books. Take a look at these Viking battle objects. This is a Viking helmet. You may have seen an image of Viking helmets with large horns coming out on either side. In real life, the Vikings did not actually have horns on their helmets. This detail was added to their story to make them seem more like the devil because they were such brutal warriors. These helmets were extremely heavy and made of iron. This is Viking chainmail. 
It was used as armor for battle and consists of small metal rings linked together to form a mesh. The chains were made of iron and were very labor intensive to make as each link in the chain had to be made and assembled. This chainmail was worn over their heads and shoulders but under the helmet. The individual links meant that the chainmail was flexible and easy to move in in comparison to the stiff leather. This is a Viking sword. Swords were expensive to make and the people that owned them were usually very powerful. The handles were usually made of wood. Take a look at this real iron Viking sword from the Hunt Museum collection. You'll notice that it doesn't have a handle. This is because the wooden handle has rotted away over time. Take a look at this Viking axe. This axe would have been used in battle, for hunting and for chopping wood. It had a socketed head on it, meaning it was made using a piece of wood with a branch coming out of the side. This bronze axe head was moulded to have a hollow for the branch to slot into. There would also have been a loop moulded into the axe head to make it easier to tie onto a branch. This made for a strong and secure axe design. Here is an image of the real Viking axe from the Hunt Museum permanent collection. Axes like these were made of iron by Viking blacksmiths. This is a Viking shield. It was used in battle to protect the person carrying it. Viking shields were made of wood and leather. The leather made the shields stronger. Vikings sometimes would have decorated their shields with hand-painted and colourful designs. Have a go at decorating your own Viking shield. Think about the colours and the patterns that you'd use and maybe have a look online to research the different kinds of patterns that the Vikings would have painted on their shields and use that as inspiration. Use the template provided in the activity book and pause the video here and have a go. Scandinavia was a long way from Ireland, so instead of travelling back home after each raid, they built villages on hills and near running water. Viking houses were long and rectangular, they were made using a technique called wattle and daub. The walls were made of woven wooden frames called wattle and plastered with a combination of soil, clay and animal dung called daub. Inside the houses were long benches and a fire for cooking. They didn't have chimneys and instead had a hole in the roof. This meant that the houses got quite smoky. Let's take a look at these Viking objects from daily life. The Vikings loved playing games. Do these look familiar? This is a Viking dice. It's just like the dice we use today. These dice would have been made of bone and used to play games. The Vikings took their board games very seriously and they often resulted in violence. This is a meher. A meher is a communal drinking vessel that was a Celtic traditional cup. Vikings would have drank out of it at gatherings and celebrations. It has multiple handles to allow it to be passed around easily and shared. Usually it would have been made of wood. Vikings drank beer and mead, which is a type of alcohol made from honey. Here are images of similar mehers that we have in the Hunt Museum permanent collection. The Liam McCarthy cup was based off the design of mehers like these. Vikings also drank out of animal horns. Most Viking drinking horns came from cattle or goats. If a Viking wanted to put down their horn full of drink, it would have spilled everywhere. This meant that they had to drink their drink all in one go.
What do you think the markings on these stones are? These markings are called Viking runes, and they were the Viking's alphabet. Many of the letters look like the Latin alphabet that we use, and some historians think that the runic alphabet was influenced by the Latin alphabet. Have a go at writing your name in Viking runes. Use the chart in the activity book to help you. Pause the video here and have a go. The Vikings were skilled craftspeople and made everything that they needed for daily life, such as weaving to make fabric for clothing and blacksmithing to make tools and weapons. Vikings carefully crafted leather boots. Here are an example of what they would have looked like. Vikings made jewellery out of amber. Amber is formed when tree sap from trees fossilises, leaving a beautiful golden gem. The Viking blacksmiths made weapons and tools, just like this pair of scissors. They also would have made objects like this key. They hung their tools from their belt. This is a Viking razor for shaving their beards. It usually had a handle made of wood and a blade made of stone at the top. The Vikings took great care of their appearance. This is a Viking comb. It has a hole and a key to make sure it stays closed on their travels. Combs like this were made of animal bone. Take a look at this real Viking comb from the Hunt Museum permanent collection. Vikings created cord to tie objects to their belts. To do this, they used a lucet like this. Have a go at making your own lucid cord using our online tutorial video on the Hunt Museum website. You can access it on the Make and Do section of the Museum from Home page. Pause the video here and have a go. Eventually, the Vikings assimilated into each of their destinations and their relatives back home in Scandinavia were converted to Christianity. By the 12th century, the Viking Age was over. At the time the Vikings came to Ireland, there were no cities or towns, and most communities were based around monasteries. The Vikings came and they raided these monasteries and established the cities of Dublin, Waterford and Limerick. The first record of Vikings in Limerick was around 845 AD. The Vikings came and they sailed up the Shannon and raided monasteries along the way. Here's an image of Mungert Abbey in Limerick that the Vikings raided. Have a look at your activity book and see if you can find the different monasteries that were raided by the Vikings on the map. Can you spot which ones are along the Shannon? Pause the video here and have a go. The Vikings invented many different styles of art including Ringerike, like on this stone. Pause the video here and write down what you can see in this image. Take a look at this earnest style artwork. Pause the video here and write down what you can see. Now take a look at the two styles together. Can you spot any differences or any similarities between the two styles? Pause the video here and write down what you can spot. In your activity book, Turn to the page on Viking art and see if you can have a go at drawing some for yourself by completing the images on the page. Pause the video here and have a go. 
thank you so much for taking part in the Hunt Museum's Viking post-primary school program. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll come into the Hunt Museum to have a look at the real Viking objects that we have there.